Welcome to the second day of the SPS Committee Thematic Workshop on Transparency. Thank you for joining us again. Before we start, a kind reminder to the, for those of you participating virtually via Zoom, please press the raise hand button to request the floor. Please only turn on your microphones after you are given the floor. And once you have finished speaking, click the mute button. I would also like to highlight that interpretation is available in English, French, and Spanish. And instructions on how to select the language on Zoom have just been posted on the chat. Like yesterday, I will open the floor for questions in each of the sessions. This morning, we continue with the workshop, starting with session three, which focuses on monitoring the implementation of international standards. This session will discuss the interface between transparency and monitoring the implementation of international standards, including the work of the ISSB observatories. I will now ask the speakers in session three, who are all joining us online, to please press the raised hand button. Let me now give the floor to the first presenter of today, Mr. Farid El Hafar, Technical Officer at Codex, who will be presenting on the use and impact of Codex text. Mr. El Hafar, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Thank you, Mr. El, El Hafar. Um, we will take questions at the end of the of the three presentations. Um, I would like to thank you for for this very interesting survey. Um, it provides indeed a very broad perspective, but also at the same time very detailed. Um, I know that some of my colleagues will ask about the presentation. It will be available in the workshop website for all of us to digest. I'm sure that many of us will have an interest in going into more detail with all this um, um, information that has been provided. Um, also taking on board the, the, the element on communication and collaboration, especially with the WTO. That's that's a very important message for this committee. So now I will give the floor to Dr. Um, Laure Weber, uh, Weber Binzel head of the Data Integration Department at the World Organization for Animal Health. Dr. Weber Binzel will be presenting on monitoring the implementation of international standards. Two examples from WA Observatory. One, monitoring WA members' transparency, and two, using SPS EPIN. Dr. Weber Binzel, the floor is yours.
Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, very very interesting presentation also on the monitoring and of course also on, on the use of eping. We we had a conversation yesterday about this platform and there are definitely benefits on on improving and enhancing its use among delegations. Um, 
I noticed that uh, we may need to take some time from the coffee break, so probably we'll, we'll now call it just a break. Um, just for all of those members that may have some bilateral meetings scheduled so that you also take that into account. Um, let us now proceed to the last presentation in session three, which will be delivered jointly by Mr. Descartes Kumba, Agricultural Officer, and Ms. Rokila Madaminova, Program Specialist, both from the International Plant Protection Convention, IPPC. Their presentation will focus on monitoring IPPC success and challenges. Mr. Kumba and Ms. Madaminova, the floor is yours.
Thank you very much, Ms. Madame Inouye. Um, now I would like to open the floor for any questions related to these three presentations. Are there any questions? I see three flags, first Honduras, followed by Turkey, and then Comesa. Honduras, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to those of us who are joining us online. Thank you for the represent to the representatives of the three sisters for their interesting presentations. They were very clear. I have a question specifically for Codex. When looking at the WOA and IPPC presentations, they both mention a figure that is quite structured. Uh, they talk about an observatory platform. From what I can understand, it monitors the use of standards in the IPPC and the and WOA. So for the question for Codex is whether you have a similar figure or are you thinking of implementing such a figure for the for Codex and Sure, considering that those platforms, the other two sisters, um, have been quite useful, even if, and it also helps in um, looking at how they can be integrated into the three sisters, particularly into Codex as well. And it would help to, to streamline the three sisters, ensure that they are harmonized. So how could these figures be incorporated into the work of the WTO? That's the sec second part of my question. How are we incorporating that type of work into the WTO? I noticed that the that WOA uses the ping platform quite a lot and uses the notifications on that. And perhaps the other two sisters could draw on that experience. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honduras. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon to all. And I would like to ask the question IP, uh, IPPC, uh, IPPC Secretariat. Uh, very last uh, time, uh, she mentioned about funding for survey. Is there any guidelines which mechanism is followed by the, the, the members? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Turkey. Now, um, Kumesa, Kumesa, please go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Yeah, my question uh, goes to Codex, and maybe uh, maybe it can apply also to the other sister uh, standard setting uh, bodies. But allow me to use uh, Codex as an example. Uh, we we all know that Codex standards are are reviewed from time to time as and when a need arises. And I know from uh, our region, Mesa, uh, these standards form as a basis for uh, food safety legislation in the member states. And the way legislation is developed based on these standards is not by way of referencing particular documents or the identity of the document, but in most cases, they pick the actual text and put it in the regulations. And the process of developing regulations takes a bit of time, such that uh, when the standards are revised at codex level, the national level regulations may not cope in terms of updating the legislation. So I wanted to understand whether the study took that into account, uh, because if the question was asked to say whether member states are using the codex, they would say yes, use, but uh, in actual fact, maybe those codex based regulations are no longer valid or are no longer aligned to to the current version of the codex standards. Thank you. Thank you, Kameza. Um So just just uh, for for our speakers, I would like to remind you to raise your hand online to request the floor, um, so that you can answer those questions. And of course, if there is any 
um, delegate that uh, is also present virtually that would like to request the floor to ask any question, please do, do the same. Um, now for these three questions, I would like to first give the floor to Codex, followed by the IPPC, and then to Bo in case they want to intervene, especially in the context of uh, this question. Um, Codex, please, if you can be very succinct with your answers, um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. Um, and thank you to um, Honduras and uh, Miriam and, and Comesa for, for, for uh, their questions. I will be uh, brief. So um, it uh, would be, um, let's say, uh, our goal eventually to have uh, a platform um, as uh, WOHA is building. Um, it was, if you remember, one of the options that we had uh, uh, presented to the executive committee. However, um, it, it is uh, uh, resource intensive and Codex doesn't have the resources right now to do this. Uh, all what we're doing is uh, um, funded by a project that is ending in 2026. So after that, we don't know exactly how we will continue funding this work. And uh, um, uh, as you know, also the codex budget has not increased and uh, um, therefore we are under um, uh, resource constraints uh, under this point of view. Um, yes, the EPING uh, uh, platform is uh, uh, something that uh, we would like uh, to um, take advantage of and uh, um, uh, replicate uh, a little bit the, 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 the efforts that have been done by um, WTO. Um, we've heard yesterday from, from Chile and from, from Uganda how easy and useful the information in Iping is, is, um, uh, is and, 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 and useful to, to be used by stakeholders. And, and, and so th therefore, Yes, this is definitely something that we would like to tackle. Um, regarding then, uh, uh, like uh, uh, taking uh, this one step forward, forward in collaboration among the three sisters, uh, as I mentioned, that the idea of writing a joint article on, on this work is also to start thinking about a possibly uh, joint funding um requests for the three sisters or maybe um uh, um sort of of a project that would uh, um uh, assist the three sisters in 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 uh, in these efforts on on monitoring the use and impact of of, of their standards uh, and setting up these observatories uh, uh, so the, the the joint article is a first step in this direction and and we we hope to to take this uh, um uh, further uh, in the future. Um, regarding the, the question of uh, COMESA, uh, yes, uh, this is an issue. You are actually raising a very good point uh, to, to possibly include it in the survey. This is something that uh, we will definitely take into consideration. Um, I'm not sure there is an answer to um, the, the, the issue that you're raising regarding national legislation and the fact that uh, um, when the codex text is updated, uh, um, not necessarily the national legislation is updated and that takes time. Um, we are aware of the issue. This presents itself, uh, um, let's say, quite uh, regularly. Um, however, there are so many factors uh, um, that enter into play that uh, uh, I'm not sure I can give you a straight answer today, but definitely something we could look at um, more in in the survey. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Codex. Now I would like to give the floor to IPPC. IPPC, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, 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 thanks uh, to the representative from Turkey on the question. So, um, as mentioned, we depend on uh, funding uh, and support provided by our contracting parties and donor organizations. So, we are always in, uh, uh, let's say, in touch with our contracting parties. 
we use every opportunity let's say such as the meetings of our governing bodies so cpm is taking place in uh, in uh, april uh, 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 that takes place annually and our regional uh, let's say, workshops where we have the representatives from the contracting parties to raise awareness on um, uh, funding needs of the IPPC observatory uh, activities. There are two options for uh, providing this kind of support. So uh, the, the contracting parties can provide funding through the IPPC multi-donor trust fund, and we invite the contracting parties uh, for this. And there is also another option, uh, such as the one that we are currently developing with the EU. Uh, so uh, setting up a project to conduct a certain activity. I can give an example of the e-commerce study that we are launching this year. Uh, so this whole study is, uh, for instance, funded by the government of uh, Canada. So uh, thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you very much, IPPC. Um, I see two more flags raised. Um, so I'll give the floor to Pakistan, followed by Uganda. Uh, please, colleagues, very brief and succinct questions. Pakistan, you have the floor. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, uh, the presenters who have really presented a very good uh, delivered a very good presentations my first question has been relevant to codex as uh, it has been highlighted that the codex standards are completely adopted and uh, mainly the dispute settlements are issues they are being followed if some countries have followed the codex standards and uh, when they are uh, trading with other trading partners or who have their own standards and they are very uh, below the codex standards uh, their limits are very much low than the codex standards so they it uh, uh, hinders the trade as well because they in their own country they have adopted the codex standards how to uh, resolve this issue how to proceed but, uh, i'm sorry to intervene it's, it's really difficult to uh, hear the 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 speaker um, if if he, he could please uh, uh, in, approach the microphone a little bit better because uh, the, the the sound is coming and going. Uh, no. Is it audible? Yes, better. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I am seeing that as uh, you have highlighted in the presentation that the codex standards are widely adopted and it are, these are harmonized. I am seeing that some countries uh, who have adopted codex standards, uh, but when they are going to export uh, uh, or trade with some other countries, which has their own standards and which are far, uh, the limits which are far low than the codex standards, then there is a problem uh, they are facing uh, to regulate the trade. So how, uh, what, uh, the codex uh, guidance is there to overcome these issues uh, for this process. And second is with respect to IPPC. Uh, I, uh, the, the IPPC, the, you said that the CPMs and uh, IC meetings are in continuous. I will request, uh, this is a rather comment, I will request if the uh, developing countries should be given due uh, weightage and consideration in those meetings, then I think uh, uh, the problems which they are facing will be highlighted there and uh, would be more appropriate to have solutions of those issues. Specifically, this was my uh, request. Thank you. Thank you, Pakistan. Uganda, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. I also want to thank the presenters from the Siri Sisters. Uh, mine is not a question, but I wanted to make a comment in relation to the, the question that was codex by Comesa. And this is specifically in relation to the concept of uh, referencing standards in, in legislation by members. I think um, uh, there are two types of referencing standards. 
there is data referencing of standards that when it is used by regulatory agents means that the, the version of the standard that is being referenced in operation is the one that was published in the here that is uh, included in the in the standards via publication of the standards but there's also undated references that uh, implies that the current version the standard is the one that will apply always so i think this is a sort of uh, an uh, awareness issue that maybe commissioner need to bring to the attention of the member states uh, and uh, problem guide them that when they're referencing standard in the legislation, they should not use the, the references uh, so that even if the standard is reviewed and a new version is published, uh, they don't have to, 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 to also amend the legislation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Uganda. Um, at this stage, I noticed that we are well over time. Um, so I would like to give the floor to the IPPCN Codex, which have received comments and questions, so that they can do a very um, sharp and quick wrap up of, of any elements that they want to add. Um, and of course, to why if they wish to do so. Uh, so just please raise your hand in case you want to intervene again. Um, so I'll, I'll give the floor to to Codex and, and letter to IPPC and then to uh, Codex, uh, please, one second, very briefly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be uh, very brief um, uh, regarding uh, the question raised by Pakistan. Thank you. Um, uh, this is uh, definitely uh, uh, an issue. and uh, um, We rely on uh, uh, countries' uh, uptake on, uh, of Codex texts. Um, what you're saying about the trade disputes is definitely something that we would look that we would like to look at um, in collaboration with um, uh, WTO, um, and this is one of uh, the, the 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 elements of of building this mechanism, uh, this monitoring mechanism that uh, we still have uh, to tackle. But thank you for your comment. It is definitely something that uh, that needs to be uh, addressed, and. Uh, um, and thank you to Uganda for 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 their comments uh, to to Comesa. Definitely, like uh, um, it, it is uh, very positive to be able to advise countries uh, uh, regarding uh, um, referencing codex standards in in. Um, back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Codex. Um, IPPC, uh, if you want to provide a, any brief remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, so regarding the question from uh, Pakistan, um, the IPPC Secretariat launches a uh, call for topics every two years and all countries, uh, uh, all contracting parties, all countries across the world have equal opportunity to submit a topic, sub uh, mention a challenge, uh, an implementation issue that is relevant to them. Uh, as for the governing uh, bodies uh, of the IPPC Secretariat, the membership in these uh, uh, in these governing bodies is uh, uh, we try to uh, uh, we try to keep a regional balance, and the membership of these committees is renewed every three years. So when the, uh, there is an opportunity to, uh, let's say, submit a candidate, we encourage countries from across the world to submit membership for these committees. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can see finally, uh, Wu, in case you want to also intervene and provide some brief remarks, you have the floor.
Thank you. Um, I think there, there's a, a, a lot of uh, interest um, in, in enhancing cooperation with the three sisters. Um, there is also a standing agenda item on monitoring the implementation of international standards in the SPS committee, where we can continue this conversation. Um, and with this, I would like to conclude session three. Please join me in an applause to our speakers today. So I hope to see all of you back this afternoon from 3 p.m. Uh, for the afternoon session of the workshop. At this point, let me share some important information with you. As indicated in the program, an evening clinic will take place um, well, right now, um, 1 p.m. in this in the same room. This is an in-person training activity led by the Secretariat for the SPS National Notification Authorities and Inquiry Points. Of course, other delegates are welcome as well if you are interested. So please note that those of you joining the EPIN clinic should come back to this room in five minutes. I also take this opportunity to draw all delegates' attention to a side event organized by COLID, which will introduce the EU-funded Agreeinfo Information Program on e new EU policies and regulations. The side event will take place from 2 p.m. in room S3 and via Zoom via, with interpretation in English, French, and Spanish. In case you can make it in person, the Zoom link to access this session is available on eAgenda in the tab overview of the meeting week. Thank you very much.